Every year, Apple releases a big update for iOS for your iPhone, and normally this gets introduced at WWDC in June and is officially available in September. These are not your small or minor updates, but normally a big steps. Let's, for example, look at the jump of iOS 18 to iOS 26, a massive jump in features, in design, and these updates can have a big impact on your current iPhone. And it's actually really important before you decide to update or what you should know and how to best prepare for these updates. So in this video, I'd like to cover seven of the most important things you should know before updating to one of the big new versions of iOS. So obviously the first thing we need to do is to check whether our iPhone is compatible with the latest version of iOS. So what you can do then is head over to Apple's website. So we go to apple.com and we we type slash OS slash iOS. And here on this page, we can exactly see which models are going to support the latest version of iOS. So here we have to scroll all the way to the bottom and there we will see a list of compatible devices. As you can see here, all the iPhones that are going to support the latest version of iOS. It's always important, obviously upfront to know what your iPhone will support the new version of iOS. All right, then number two, this is optional though, but I highly recommend you to do this and this is to clean up your device. So just start fresh, remove junk, remove things that are taking unnecessary space on your iPhone. So first what you can do is you can go to general and in general, you can go to iPhone storage. You can check your storage and then you can see obviously which apps uh, are taking the most amount of storage. Photos is always a massive one with people, but you can also have a look at the apps that are running on your iPhone that you're maybe not using anymore. And you can simply delete them uh, right here, or you can just uh, delete them on your iPhone. Uh, so let's say you want to remove a certain app just like that, you can remove it and it's going to free up space. One a really important, nice tip that I have for people that have a lot of photos and uh, videos on their device is to sort in your photos sort on uh, videos because most of the time it are the videos that are taking the most amount of space. So as you can see, this is a seven a minute video. This is probably going to take a huge amount of storage. Let's check, I think around 600 megabytes for this video. And yeah, just make sure that you check your videos, look at the time, and then you can easily remove them right here just by long pressing them and delete. And obviously they will be in your recently deleted deleted a folder. What you can do though, if you want, and you're sure that you don't need these videos or photos anymore. And then in utilities you have, yeah, your recently deleted folder and let's view this album. And in here you can then decide to select all and delete all. And yeah, most of the time, this is going to free up the most amount of storage for people. And lastly, what you also can do is enable offload unused apps. This means that it's going to automatically offload apps on your iPhone. Your iPhone will recognize the apps that you're not using that often and put these in the cloud, so to say, or at least remember that you had these apps on your iPhone. And then if you want to reuse them, you quickly can download them again in the app store. All right, number three has to do with your battery. With the latest update, you're able in iOS 26, for example, to see your battery health. And as you can see, you scroll down to battery health. Yeah, your maximum capacity is essential in order to decide if you want to replace your iPhone's battery. If that's the case, then you should do that before updating. And when should you replace your battery? I normally recommend if your battery drops below a maximum capacity of 80 to 75% and you're experiencing battery problems on your iPhone, then that's the right moment to replace your iPhone's battery. What I recommend you to do is really do this at Apple or a really good certified premium reseller that has a contract with Apple. And again, do this before updating your device. Why before? Because normally a new big update is going to be a bit more demanding for your battery. So yeah, that's why you should replace your battery before updating. Then number four is to update all your apps. So to do this, obviously we have to go to the app store and click your profile 
profile and then scroll down and in here you can update all your apps i already did this but you have the option obviously to update all your apps at once or just do this a one by a one well as you can see nothing to update from here but highly recommended before updating to the latest version of ios to also update the apps because then they will highly likely be optimized for that new ios version as well now number five maybe the most important thing people should always do in my opinion is make a backup of their device and there are two ways to do this the first one is the easiest option and that is to do that through your iCloud so uh, let's go to my Apple ID and then go to iCloud and here you have the option to make a iCloud backup let me take another iPhone to better demonstrate this to you so in here we go to iCloud so Apple ID then we go to iCloud and here you can see iCloud backup and yeah back up this iPhone this is going to be done automatically and I highly recommend you to do this it's gonna give you so much peace of mind just to know that you always have a backup of your device let's say your iPhone gets stolen or broken doesn't work anymore you always have all your data backed up but obviously there are also people that don't want this they don't want to have an iCloud backup the second option is to have it connected or wired to a Mac preferably and there you can do it through iTunes on Windows or through a finder on Mac yeah you can do this on both devices nevertheless before updating to a big new iOS release always yes always make a backup number six sometimes people made VPN accounts or have beta profiles or other other configured profiles and it's actually recommended to remove these old profiles because they might block the update so in order to do this we go to a settings in settings we scroll to a general and then in general we scroll to the bottom where we see a VPN and device management and right now I have nothing here but in here some people have different accounts different VPN profiles or beta software profiles and I highly recommend you to remove these before for updating always check them before and you should really know what you're doing here what the profiles exactly mean and do but yeah again also recommended to remove these before the update to make sure it's not going to get blocked in any way and then a uh, number seven uh, when should you update so yeah do you want to do this on day one when a big new iOS update is released normally this is in September or do you prefer maybe to wait for a later more stable version version a lot of people are always excited and want to quickly update this normally you should be good because there already have been a lot of developer betas and public beta tests that have taken place in months because normally in june the new os's are released and then people can already test it and we get a bunch of updates until september there's always a little risk of small bugs and crashes and maybe drain on your battery so yeah that's something personal you need to decide but you can be certain for around 99.9 99% that you won't have any big problems anymore and lastly I have some bonus tips for updating so when should you do it what's the best timing strategy um, so let's say if you need your iPhone during the day I really recommend you to update then in the morning because then the update can take at least like 30 minutes to 60 minutes to update your device depending on your Wi-Fi speeds and your model obviously so what I really recommend you to do is update maybe later at night in the evening when you're back from work and be sure you don't need your iPhone in the coming like two to three hours at least also when updating make sure your iPhone is at least charged to 50% even better is to just keep it plugged in while doing the update that way you're certain to have enough power and that you're certain that your iPhone won't suddenly die during the update which can be a really critical thing and lastly a stable Wi-Fi connection is also recommended so you're certain to get the update as quickly and stable as possible all right guys hope this was helpful and this guide is going to be beneficial for the current big update and the future updates to come in iOS subscribe hit the bell icon and the like button and see you in the next video peace